Welcome back to our Dream in the Woods. Uh, I want to welcome a, a bunch of new subscribers. Uh, the channel is just doing better than expected. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we, Beth and I are uh, in the midst of building our own house, our own home uh, that is, uh, initially was a barn, timber frame barn um, that we're gonna make into our house. Uh, we're milling all of the timbers ourselves and a lot of the lumber uh, with our own sawmill and most of the logs off the property, but we've had to buy a few truckloads to um, bridge the gap, so to say, so to speak. So anyway, we're do-it-yourselfers, uh, not professionals. My brother-in-law, Eric, is invaluable. You'll see him. He's helping a lot and in, the, in a lot of decision-making and... Uh, we're just getting after it. We're days away from not milling anymore and just going into building mode. I am short. I'm down to 18 timbers I need to mill. And so I have the day today that uh, I'm going to dedicate to that. Hopefully get through at least two logs, maybe three logs and uh, see how we do. Let me show you what I got going on. So I'm going to try to target some more uh, six by 10 by 12 and a half. So this is kind of a bowed log here, but, and it's a 16 footer. So I'm gonna cut it down to this mark. And hopefully with that, I can get my six by 10 out of it. So anyway, first log of the day, let's get to it. Okay, this is ideal if this works out. This is where I like it. So about 10 to the center of pith. I made that line with level. Um, and then that's my six by 10 laid out. This is definitely a bowed log, so I don't know if I'll be able to get it all the way down. But then the key to having that is this faint line there that I drew um, so about 10 so center in the pith there it's got a big bell on it quite a curve but I made it vertical on purpose because of how the curve is and we'll see how it goes uh, I actually took the bunk out so it curves out that way too but as long as the sawmill can fit through there it's no problem I didn't debark this one and it just didn't seem as dirty as some of the others and so I'm just gonna kind of keep an eye on it as I go and I may have to debark a few spots but this opening cut looks pretty dang clean and so we're just gonna go with that let's get this all going start cutting Okay, first cut or face of this log. Um, that straight line kind of tells me that I should be able to make it. Um, there might be just a little bit of wane right there. And how I measured that up 
is I just kind of went roughly three inches over from the pith um, there. So I could move that over a fraction, a little bit of wane doesn't bother me. Uh, also, people kind of think about heartwood versus sapwood. So you can kind of see this white ribbon there. That's the sapwood. It'd be best if all the whole beam was the heartwood. <clears throat> but all these beams are oversized. The 6 by 10 that's spanning 12 feet that is plenty of a, of a beam there. So I know it ties the whole structure in. So anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. It does look okay. Um, sometimes I just throw this grid up here because this is exactly uh, 6 inches wide. And kind of gives me an idea uh, just for visual effect. Uh, a lot of people ask me about this grid. This is a quilter's grid. Um, they come in lots of different sizes. This is very handy because everything I'm milling for timber wise is six inches wide. So I can easily go to six by 10, eight and six. I can center it because I can see through it. Very handy. Uh, I bought this one at Walmart. So anyway, flip this sucker over. Open up the other side, see if it tells the same story. Critical third cut. Of course, a real a lot of attention to making sure that's flat on that log stop, um, and then leveling the pith again. This is quite a bow on this log, so let's see how far it is off the bunk. Those don't especially make great timbers, but. See if we can cut a straight one out and make sh a lot of times these will spring and we'll just have to see what kind of spring we get out of it. So um, maybe it'll be just fine. But yeah, it looks like it should be fine. T like time will tell here. able to get two two by pieces out of that uh, that would be a this is be a two by tens I don't really need two by tens um, I've already cut all I need so two by sixes so I'll cut that down and then get uh, I use the two by twos um, 
for different projects, so maybe I'll cut a few of those out of that. Uh, but remember how I was talking about it springing? Um, so that sprung a little bit on that side, and we see that with these curved logs. And actually, this is not too bad. So the bottom one is nice and flat. Of course, there's pressure on it, but there's um, just a little bit, eighth of an inch on both sides. So that's pretty good. Let's pop this off and see what happens. See if that other one comes up. Yeah, it looks nice and tight. So my guess is I might get some flex out of that next one, but uh, this beam, the beam should be good. So those are some solid boards. Okay, I just made the final cut. Uh, you can kind of see right there. Um, that piece didn't flex, meaning it didn't bow up. And then the beam itself, or the timber itself, is sitting flat on the bunk. That's another thing that you can see. It'll flex and then it won't be sitting flat on the bunk. So for all practical purposes, I think this is good. That, that curve to the log is should not affect that timber so at least that's what i think and good centered pith there and i think that it should be similar on this side so kind of hard to see but right there maybe just a little bit off but plenty good like that so yeah you can see that banana in that slab there so anyway good good timber pull this off i'll get two two by sixes and two one by sixes out of the bonus material that's not too bad out of a curvy log so get back to it Uh, I don't know, I don't mean to brag, but look at the, the these two logs. I mean, they, they're as nice as they get. And then third log is just as nice, straight, big. So the two timbers that I'm going after is six by... 10 by 12 and a half and then 6 by 8 by 16. Um, so I think what this, the next log here, I'm going to cut the small end out to 12 and a half and make a 6 by 10 out of it. And then I was playing around with my chart and it just depends on what the butt looks like down there or where I cut, but there's not much of a taper. Uh, I should be able to get two six by eights out of the next piece that uh, are 16 foot long so um really nice logs so I'm, I'm spoiled and i'm grateful so we'll put them to good use uh keep them here locally and they'll be part of the house that, that makes it feel a little better cutting such nice piece nice trees
All right, log number two here. Uh, it's just. I don't think it's going to be tight. I think it's going to be just fine. But um, when you center the pith, the uh, timber isn't exactly centered every time. So, but that's what this one looks like. Um, turn the log so it's oblong, so it would be vertical like that. Uh, so at least I can know I can get my height out of it, uh, my 10 inches. And then, of course, didn't have to lift that log very much, but just to get the pith centered, cut her up. Yeah, quite a few knots in this one. That might have a little character to it.
right, here's what that second timber looks like. Uh, seems like it's off just a hair. Um, but sweet looking timber. No pitch pockets or anything. Yeah, pretty decent. Uh, so we'll call that a, a good one. Well, beautiful morning. Got out of the house early this morning, got out here. I put this log on before I went in last night. 16.6, I uh, went ahead and peeled it. It had a lot of dirt in it. And I got everything leveled up. That's my goal right there. Two six by eights. Uh, might be a little tight on the one side. Um, and I didn't give myself a lot of room to cut the pith out, but we'll see how it goes um just can't say enough about these logs it's nice ones and if i don't get the two out of here it's just you know because log wouldn't accommodate it so kind of weird how that pith is clear off center on that this side here um yeah let's get to it get the saw going
All right, got the critical third cut. Um, of course, center of the pith again. Um, take good care at doing that, especially in this one since it's so, so tight. And then the making sure that the log is square to the bunk uh, off of these here. The log stops. Um, I think this is my favorite cut just because it's the most complicated and it's the most crucial. So, yeah, I uh, wonder if I mess this up. Nope. Just for a second there, it kind of looked like that was six inches wide and not eight inches wide, but it's eight inches wide, so that's good. It just looks, those cuts look more square than they do rectangular, so. Anyway, going good, beautiful morning, get to it. Well, that cut didn't turn out like I wanted it to just tapered here in the center quite a bit so that's not going to work uh, that much uh, you know I might be able to say that's okay definitely that's okay and down this side I would say that's all okay but this this segment in here is too much so and I'm right up against that pith. Uh, you know, I don't, I still would like to get one out of here. So I think what I'll do is I'll come down and like hit the pith kind of exactly. And then flip the, flip it over, see where the pith look, what it looks like in the, the timber. And if it's pretty well out, then I can shave off uh, maybe three-eighths of an inch off the top and then see what that looks like again um, and that might make it but definitely get one here this is no problem I think <laughs> hopefully I'm not messing this whole thing up and being greedy um, the other thing I can do is just forget that and center one right here on the pith and color a day such a nice tree I'd like to get two out of it. So let's see what I can do. I think I'm, I'm going to go for two and see how it turns out. Okay, so definitely cut it to where the pith is out of it. The pith's all contained in this still. Uh, there's a little tiny piece right there. Um, so it remains to be seen whether when I cut that this piece now, I'll have to flip it back over and cut it to six inches where it'll be. But um, in the meantime, I have to cut this one and it's all, it's tight-ish also. So um, I'm gonna flip that 180 cut it off and then flip it again and then cut it down to six inches here. So anyway, uh, kind of fun, kind of challenging. They'll be disappointed if I can't get a timber out of that one, but while else fails, I'll cut it into some other dimensional lumber. So beautiful morning.
Okay. So this is the second timber. Uh, the pith is still in most of this one on the bottom side. So I'll flip that 180. Uh, just basically no weighing. There was one little mark from logging right there, but good looking one. And then I'll flip this one 180 also, tie them together and cut them, and then we'll see uh, how much weighing and whether that's acceptable on on the second timber. So, yeah, getting there. Well, I've been fiddling around trying to be happy with this and I just can't do it. So this timber that is questionable uh, sprung, meaning it flexed. And so now I'm up off the deck, oh, probably an eighth of an inch. And Same thing on this side. So, not only do I have a situation where I'm tight on trying to get the wane out, I don't really have space to trim both sides and, and make a worthwhile timber. So, dang it. Uh, I think I'm going to pull that out, cut the primary one to six inches, and call it good and come up with a plan to utilize the rest of the timber that uh, has the wane on it. So, yeah, dang it. Uh, it's kind of a, that probably is sprung because I have not taken enough off of this other side. But if I take stuff off this other side, then you don't have a nice uh, six inch wide timber. It's narrow at both ends so yeah worth a try well i decided to make one by material out of that uh sprung timber um so those on the mill Three one by eights and then a one by five, and then two more one by eights down there. Um, this is all the other edges up material. So four two by six by sixteens and then two one by six by sixteens. So that's all bonus material out of that one log. And this is the other bonus material out of the two logs. Uh, I think there's five two by six by tens and two one by six by tens. So got to put that away. And this kind of ends milling for a while. Um, and that is because look out there. Slab is poured. They just did that this morning. Uh, I think the video has already been shown by the time you guys seen this, but. Uh, we're switching to build mode so I am in switching away from milling and more into organization and preparation for this build uh, I get quite a bit to do uh, I've already done quite a bit so uh, I milled that one by five because I'm gonna just leave these on the deck and kind of use this as storage and organization um, while we build uh, lots of stuff to come out here to be ready for that so but put these away and it will have been a good good morning to milling out here that was good to get a 
a few of those trees done and uh, three more timbers off the list. So I think I'm down to 15 that I need to make uh, in order to complete the timber uh, cut list. So uh, taking a break from milling um, until the center part of the structure is up and then I'll get back on the milling and um, eh, hopefully that's within a month. So anyway, lots going on here, lots to think about. Uh, exciting times uh, in the next few weeks here. So uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe and wherever you're watching, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, thanks again.